Well, you're welcome to this um, session, another idea on what we've been doing in LSW and um, I guess you've been having a nice time and hopefully um, a series of connections with new ideas on how to imagine theory, criticism, culture and so on and so forth. Now, um, today we are continuing with our dialogue, so to speak, with things we do in terms of research, in terms of, you know, scholarly productions, and in terms of how we hope to be understood and, you know, identified as creating real academic value in our research. Some time back, we were talking about how to engage, so to speak, your examiner in the context of an examination scenario, in the context of how you engage text or how you respond to questions or ideas or data that might demand your own original you know, uh, voice in terms of making something very convincing to your examiner. Today, we want to go a little bit further and look at the area of what is really called for when you do research in the humanities today or maybe in the social sciences. Well, I want to come in by saying that um, research in cultural productions today, such as literature, the media, music, theater, and so many other things that have to do with the environment, with cultures and the like, uh, is such a thing that is trending today. And um, it's progressively telling us that there is no particular fixity of disciplines or courses any longer. Contemporary research in scholarly productions, okay, concentrates now on a shift from what was happening in those days. By those days, I mean, well, if you can take it back to the, you know, the 19th century and the like, where you have certain boundaries of knowledge where you can say, oh, this is this field, that is this field, and that is field. That is still going on. For example, you can talk about belonging to a department of English or, or you know, art culture or music, or you're talking about uh, media studies or whatever. You are still right. It's still going on. But then there is this currency of transgressing boundaries even in scholarship. And I must also say that this is a generative process that is making a statement about how identities interconnect, how humanity itself is a fluid you know, phenomenon happening within human existence. And we've got to factor that in. Now, to talk about any research, inquiry, in cultural, you know, wares, as I recall them, or cultural productions, we've got to understand certain things. That, for example, if you are thinking about what should I make my research on? What should be my area of research? You know, I'm, I'm in the humanities, or you say you are in literature core, and you are thinking about what to do in terms of research. What do I do? Now, First, I want to make a very, very fast summary of what is entailed here in contemporary times. I will talk about the currency of what is popularly known now as cultural studies. Cultural studies is, we can say, a kind of avant-garde penetration into how we look at culture today in contemporary times. It is a way in looking at culture beyond the prison of, you know, group identity, which in a way, uh, some scholars, some critics will say, allows what we have talked about some time back, allows what we call, or what has been called epistemic violence. You know, when you talk about a group formation of characterizing people that they belong to this particular culture, in, in many cases, they belong to this ethnic group, or the idea of ethnicity, in fact, snowballed into the idea of nationality, you know, that these people belong to this group. What becomes very, very obvious is the fact that there is a boundary of 
belonging. For example, if somebody says, I'm Swahili, there are certain things you are looking for. In all these cultures, those ethnic groups, they often have certain things that are very, very clear, very, very characteristic of them. Number one, they normally have some geographical you know, boundaries. They have a map of where in geographical terms they might have come from. The issue of migration is involved as well, you know, because today we can't talk about a fixed Yoruba people within a fixed Yoruba confine in terms of geography. But there's often an identification with an originary place, a particular route that is in geographical terms that defines you know, certain characteristics of cultures. You also have the index of language, the idea of language that you know you can identify a particular you know ethnic group which creates its own culture around that you know within the area of the language that is used that is dominant there. Number three, we discover that there are certain forms of you know regulations in terms of morals, in terms of you know things that unite them and make them celebrate their own uh, difference from others things that have to, to do with rites of passage that have to do you know with um, you know uh, moments where they can talk about distinctions that refer to maybe the idea of culture the idea of the law the idea of people uh, interactions with the opposite sex or interactions you know within you know, a situation where you are talking about generational differences, okay? People of the older generation relating to the people of the younger generation. You have such things. And you might discover there is the index of material culture. Along some ethnic groups, you can say that certain material things that are very, very important, okay, are peculiar to them. Important, so to speak, in human existential terms, but they have their own ways of defining which culture this person comes from. For example, within the Yoruba culture in West Africa, you discover that there are ways in which the men and the women dress in native terms that would define them from you know, some other cultures like the Aousa Fulani or some other cultures like the Swahili, you know, the tree in Ghana, the difference, you know, in ways in which they would dress compared to the Tamils in India and so many of such. So the material culture, such as the dress code or the, the way they dress, okay, uh, in terms of food, in terms of value culture as well, in terms of ideas that are codified in proverbs, in idiomatic terms and all that. So all these kind of indices reflect the boundaries of culture. And along that line, they make culture to seem to be things that bring people within communalistic belongings. And therefore, you know, subjectivities are postponed or voices of individual people must get the consent of the majority, so to speak, either uh, conventionally or not conventionally, you know, uh, or either directly or indirectly, there must be a kind of social consent in what you do. But today, because of, you know, a number of things that have happened in recent times, going back to the 20th century, so to speak, and then the post-war developments that began to happen in the West that went around in terms of affecting the whole world and then the developments that have to do with global warfare the first world war the second world war and then developments in the academia where you found leftist thinkers really engaging you know certain confining orientations within their societies you discover that things began to get ruptured in terms of looking at culture, in terms of looking at belonging, in terms of looking at identity, that today we can talk about a field called cultural studies. Now, I want to give some fast indices, some fast uh, signifiers of how we understand culture in cultural studies today. Number one, while 
culture in the past had been fixed to the origins of beginnings, the origins of how people can refer to some past history that unites them. Cultural studies, as we understand it today, rather looks at the synchronic, rather looks at what is happening at the moment. It looks at contemporary culture. And when you talk about looking at contemporary culture, it reflects a number of uh, breakages from how culture used to be understood. Number one, in cultural studies, there is more interest in contemporary culture within modern society rather than looking at culture from rural or you know anthropological lenses of culture number two culture is more celebrated in cultural studies as something that is negotiated not something that is defined for people in other words cultural studies allows the dynamics of subjectivity allows the dynamics of personal choices and also looks at how culture is never something that is within a defined a block system it's rather an examination of culture in fluidity culture in a continuum how culture gets continuously produced because of a number of dynamics that are either predictable in very, very closed, uh, let me say, in terms of situations that have to do with civil laws, you know, civil society and the like. But then, more than that, it is often a concentration of how culture is determined by indices that go beyond what people can trap. Indices that have to do with factors such as the economic climate, intersecting issues like politics, intersecting issues of urban social relations, and intersecting issues like gender, okay? Issues that have to do with sexuality and have to do with how people, you know, negotiate their own personal spaces. Therefore, cultural studies is more interested in dealing with the independence, okay, the a rupture, a kind of fluidity of cultural conceptions. In other words, when we look at cultural studies, we might be looking at how, for example, you know, advertisements on the media can inform social choices of how people look at, you know, new moralities, new ethics, it can suggest how gender is shifting, it can be programmatic, it can be something that is generated from a particular culture of corporate bodies that influence, for example, youth behavior, behavior that has to do with fashion, how it influences, okay, appearances of certain people in some areas, how it has to do with choices of relationships with the opposite sex, how it brings new ideas of sexuality, how it also creates the fluidity of cultural relations, how it does transculturations and the like. And it also fixes its gaze on how, to a very great extent, the boundaries of the nation state, the boundaries of a space itself is ruptured. For example, in cultural studies today, culture is not something boxed within an ethnos, within an ethnic idea of we belong to this. It's no more something as a way of life that a group of people are identified with. It's now rather a way in which culture is seen as very unpredictable in terms of how it relates with new concepts, new ideas, things that have to do with the media, things that have to do with the industry of fashion, that has to do with, you know, taste for migrancy and, you know, associations with other people, other races and the like. It also has to do with dealing with the problems of mannequin separations of people that see themselves as the most important in relation to others that are not important. That binarism between we and them. Cultural studies tries to break that.
it tries to bring about what we can call a medley of negotiable belongings so that it is possible that somebody in cultural studies is transgressing fields as defined as literature, defined as music, defined as theatre and the like, and it goes into areas that you cannot actually begin to say this is literature because literature now begins to have intermediate connectivities where you cannot always say i am saying something that has to do with writtenness as projected by modernists a, a written kind of literary culture that has an academic bent within it but then you might be seeing a mix of the suburb a mix of the ghetto with you know ultra culture blending into something that is hybrid that is strange okay that postmodernism might call something like bricolage or uh, postmodernism can see as something that continuously brings the ironies okay of fixity and bring out things that are choosable things that we can pick things that we can negotiate things that are not always constant, things that are always within the range of choices. Now, in literature, if you were to be in a department called literature, what are the kind of things you are likely to be privileged to do research on? I dare tell us that just as we have emphasized on LSW, literature has gone beyond that enlightenment packaging that insists on its writtenness, insists on that trajectory of its writtenness as dominantly having to be coming from a Western language. In fact, the core Western languages of English, French, um, Portuguese, and occasionally nowadays German. Okay, now it's gone beyond that to talk about a number of choices. A number of things we can do. Number one, it can be oral, it can be digitalized, literature can be digitalized. We can argue blogging as a form of contemporary and engaging literature. We can talk about the production of film. We can talk about the cartoon as within the area of what we generally call text. That is, you know, any element that has a form of information that has communicative value that speaks a story can be called a text we'll continue with this dialogue in our next series thank you very much make sure you subscribe to this channel make sure you share it make sure you make it something that uh, is continually enjoyed by people as you discuss it thank you very much mm -hmm.